and welcome. We are here at the Monticello Firehouse with firefighter Mapes, who happens to be a 2012 graduate of Monticello, and he's going to be giving us some very important information about fire safety. So welcome and pay attention closely. Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to go over some fire safety tips for fire prevention. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with smoke detectors that you have in your house. If you don't, you should. Okay? These smoke detectors should be in the ceilings, should be in the hallways outside of your bedrooms, in your bedrooms if possible, and then near your kitchen living room area. You want to go home and you want to ask your parents where they are. You want to have your parents check these. These smoke detectors should be tested once a month to make sure the batteries are okay and that they're working in great order. If they're not working, they either should be replaced or the batteries should be replaced. On the back, you'll see there's a little date here. And if that date is past 10 years ago, then you want to replace the smoke detector and get a new one. So in order to test it, you would take it down from the wall and there's a little button on the smoke detector and you would hit it. So when you hit that button, you'll hear this sound and when you let go, it should stop. It might take a couple seconds, but it will stop. That's the sound you want to hear to make sure it's working properly. Some might give a few beeps when you hold the button, but you want to hear some kind of reaction out of the smoke detector to make sure it works properly. If you hear this sound, it means you might have a fire in your house. God forbid that happens, you want to be able to have a spot to meet your whole family outside. And this is going to be some homework for you tonight. I know you, you don't like homework and I don't blame you, but this is great homework and this could help save your life. Okay, so when you go home tonight, ask your family if you don't already know where you should meet outside in the event of an emergency. Okay, um, some, may, some may be a mailbox out front, some might be a tree or a neighbor's house. Okay, but you want to have a meeting spot outside in the event of an emergency and you want to have two ways of getting out of your house whether it's the front door back door um, something of that sort so you want to go home and ask your parents and pra actually practice it within different spots of your house pretend you're in the living room and there's an emergency pretend you're in your bedroom and there's an emergency okay this is going to help save your life so in the event that there's an actual fire in your house you want to know the number to call. And that number everyone should know is 911. When you call 911, you don't want to call just to say hi and you know how are they doing, how's their day going. You want to only call 911 in the event of a true emergency. Okay? And when you call 911, they're going to ask for your name. They're going to ask what's going on and what you need and then where you're located. So you'll say your name You'll say if you need a firefighter, a police officer, or an ambulance, you'll say what's going on, my house is on fire, or something of that sort, and then you'll give them your address. So if you don't know your address, you want to memorize that. You'll have to ask your parents, that way you can memorize it. And, like I said, in the event of a fire, the first thing you're going to want to do is get low. So you want to be way down here because the smoke and the heat rises. So you don't want to be up there breathing that nasty stuff in. You want to stay down here because this is where the clean air is, okay? If you're sleeping in your room, you want to try to sleep with your door closed because that will help stop the fire and smoke from entering your bedroom at night. If you hear your smoke detectors going off while you're sleeping or anywhere in your house, and the door is shut, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get low, crawl, crawl, or, or do one of these to the, to the door, and you're gonna to wanna to feel the door with your hand. If the door is hot, you don't go that way. You go out a different way or you stay where you are, 
okay? If the door is just a little warm, then you can open it up this much and peek out. Remember, down low, and you'll see if there's smoke. If there's no smoke, you can go that way. If there's only a little bit of smoke, then you can go that way, but again, like I said before, you wanna stay low, okay? If there's no smoke at all, then you can just go as far as you can, okay? And try to get out and meet at that space outside with your family. If you're on a second floor, and let's say your bedroom's on the second floor, upstairs, and the door's hot, but you have a window, okay? You don't want to jump out the window because that would hurt you. But what you could do is you would open the window. Uh, if you can't open the window, try to break the window. It's the only time that you're able to break a window, okay? It actually saved a, a young child's life many years ago in the village of Monticello. They broke their window and then try to get our attention. Wave your arms, scream, shout, hey, I'm over here. Try to get our attention so we know that you're there, okay? It actually saved a young child's life. If you have to, throw, throw stuff at us. Um, try not to use books, but throw your pillows so we don't get hurt, okay? Uh, but get our attention and then we will do what we have to do to come and get you and make sure you're out of the building safely. All right, boys and girls. So what we're gonna cover now is stop, drop, and roll. And that's what you want to do in the event that you yourself are on fire. So what you're going to do is you're going to cover your face, you're going to slowly get down to the ground, and then you're going to, with your face covered, roll around until the fire's out. And then your other principles are going to come and also demonstrate how you want to properly do stop, drop, and roll. No, oh, cover your face. There you go. And then you roll. Alright, great job. Great job. So, stop, drop, and roll um, allows that the, it almost like smothers the fire. So it takes the air away from the fire. For a fire to burn, you need the fuel, which would be your clothes. You need the ignition, which the fire would already be on you. And then you need air to feed the fire. So if you run around like crazy, it just feeds the fire because it gives it more air. And it won't go out. However, if you, if you drop and roll, also covering your face to protect your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, it allows it to smother the fire out. So now what we're gonna cover is stuff that you might see on the ground or you might see a friend or one of your siblings playing with that probably they shouldn't be touching, okay? And that's gonna be a lighter, could be matches, um, candles, anything like that that produces a flame, okay? That stuff is very dangerous and you don't wanna touch that at all. So in the event, you know, you find it on the ground, you don't want to play with it, you don't want to touch it. What you want to do is go tell a grown-up. And who a grown-up is, it could be one of your principals, it could be your parents, it could be your older brother or sister that is way older than you. Okay, it could just be a normal adult, your babysitter, but you do not want to touch it because it's very dangerous and it could hurt a lot of people. All right, boys and girls, this is Fireman Wayne, and now we're gonna go over what we have to wear in the event that there's a fire. This gear protects, the, uh, protects us to protect you. First, what Fireman Wayne's gonna do is he's gonna take his shoes off and he's gonna put on his boots and pants. Our gear is kind of like a, a Halloween costume. It, like I said before, it is bulky, weighs about 50 pounds. But this protects us so we don't get burned in a fire. He's got his pants on. The next thing he's going to put on is his, what we call a Nomex hood. It goes around his neck in the back of his ears and his head, and that protects our neck from getting burned. It's almost like a scarf. 
Next he's putting on his coat, almost like a winter jacket, big and bulky. And that protects us as well. It also keeps our body heat in, so we do get hot. We don't feel the heat from the fire so much, but we'll feel our own body. So what he just did right there is he turned on his air pack, and that allows us to breathe in a fire. You can go ahead and put that on me. And that's what holds our air that we can breathe for approximately 15 to 25 minutes in a fire. Alright, the next thing he's going to do is put his mask on. And this is where we start to look different. Right now he still looks the same. But once he puts this mask on, he looks a little different. Still the same guy. Still the same fireman wing. But this is what we look like when we come in a building to save you. It's very important to not become afraid of us when you see him. Do not hide under your clothes or blankets or under your bed or in your closet. You want to be out. That way we can find you easier. The next thing he's going to do is put on his helmet. And then his gloves, almost like winter gloves. They're big and bulky. It's hard to, to feel stuff with them. And then the last thing he's going to do is he's going to click his regulator right there into his mask and that's what allow him to breathe. So hearing that sound, hearing that sound is what we're going to sound like in a fire. You're going to hear that. That's, that's Fireman Wayne breathing right now. Now I'll have him say hi to you guys. Hi so you can, hear. can you hear me? So that's what a fireman is going to sound like when they come in to save you. It's going to sound different, but we're the same guy, okay? Don't be afraid. Okay, can you talk a little bit more? Just a little bit so I can hear one more time. How you doing, kids? Firefighter Wayne here. Can you hear me? Okay, so Fireman Wayne, if he was in a building, he would say, Fire Department, can you hear me? And if you can hear him at that time, that's when we need you to shout, okay? Good for any reason you can't shout, maybe throw something at him if you can see him, okay? Just try to get his attention. But this is what it's going to be like. Okay, so now Fireman Wayne is going to take his stuff off slowly just to show you guys that he's still the same guy, all right? Do not be afraid of him or any other firefighter for that matter. See that? You want to say hi to him one more time? Hello kids, still the same guy. So in the event of emergency, don't run away from me. I'll be the one to come and help you out if you need. Okay guy, you're going to have some homework tonight. What you're going to want to do is go home and ask your parents to check the smoke detectors to make sure they work and that they make sure that they're within 10 years old. You're going to want to practice your stop, drop, and roll and show your parents what stop, drop, and roll is. And then you're going to want to practice with your parents from different areas of your house, from different rooms, that there's an emergency and where to meet outside. I know it, you don't want more homework because homework is no fun, but this is the type of homework that could save your life one day. If you have any questions, please feel free to get them to your teachers and your teachers will get them back to myself and my fellow firefighters here at the firehouse. How much do your uniforms weigh and how long do you work for? Alright, so that's a good question. We get that asked quite often. Our gear weighs anywhere from 50 to 75 pounds, so that's about the size, that's about the weight of a, a young child. Uh, it does get cumbersome and gets heavy over time, uh, but we have to wear it to make sure we're safe in a fire. Uh, as far as how much do we work, um, most of the, most firefighters are volunteers actually, so they can only, they come whenever they can. Uh, however, myself and there's a few others here at the Monticello Fire Department that do this as a career. So for those that do, we work a 24 hours on and then we'll have three days off. So we're here from 8.30 in the morning 
till 8.30 in the morning the next morning, and then we get off for three days. How, how can you breathe in the fire? Okay, so as far as breathing in a fire, um, we have specialized packs that we wear that hold a bunch of air that also have a mask and everything is sealed and that's how we're able to breathe in a fire. It has normal air that we're breathing right now just like this, compressed real tight and usually we can breathe for about 20-25 minutes in a fire. How do you know if somebody is stuck in a fire? Great question. Um, sometimes we don't know at all if somebody's in a fire. That's why we do our best to check even if we're not 100% sure. We always try to make sure everyone's out. We'll go in and, and, and search it just to be safe. Uh, what we would like to see happen is if somebody is available to come to us when we get there and tell us whether somebody is actually in there or if everybody is out and everyone's out safely. What do you do if the doors are locked and the windows won't open? What do you do if your doors are locked? <laughs> okay, so, and that happens quite often that the, the doors will be locked, the windows will be shut, um, but either way we have to get in there to be able to make sure everyone's out and also put the fire out. So what we have, here are a couple tools that we use during fires to be able to get into windows and doors that are locked. This is called a halligan and this is an axe. And with the combination of the two, we can get through almost any door possible and be able to enter that, that building that's on fire. How do you know when there is a fire? So how do we know when there's a fire? Sometimes, uh, People will come actually to the firehouse to let us know that there's a fire. The firehouse does have a phone number, God forbid, uh, that they can call here because somebody is here and tell us. But what we would really like to see is everyone should know the phone number 911. And when you call 911, you'll tell them your name, you'll tell them what's going on, whether there's a fire or you need an ambulance or a police officer and, and you tell them what exactly you need and that way the 911 center will then let us know what's going on and they'll we have these fancy little things right here called a pager that certain tones and certain sounds will come out from here to let us know that we have a call and then they'll tell us exactly where it is and what it is that way we could be prepared. Do you guys get scared running into the building that's full of flames? So, the question is, do we as firefighters get scared uh, when we see a building that's on fire? And to be honest with you, sometimes it is 100% scary. Um, I've been scared, uh, people that I fight fires with have been scared, but at the end of the day, um, we, we have a job to do, so we have to push past that fear and, and make sure that everyone's safe, make sure everyone's out, and then we go and put the fire out. So yes, we've all been scared, um, but we have to be, we have to find courage to, to push past that fear and be able to still get the job done, because at the end of the day, um, we have to put that fire out. All right, boys and girls, so if you have any more questions about what we covered today, please feel free to get those to your teacher and your teachers will get them back to myself and my fellow firefighters at the firehouse. I hope you learned something today and have a great day. Thank you so much.